ask everyone to take a seat. Get closer to the screen, we can do that as well. 
Uh, if you've got questions during the presentation, please feel free to ask, because this is a very small group. We can make this really a conversational discussion. So I will give you some highlights of uh, the process, the things that we've done for the past. It's been an over a year process, and we've had a series of community meetings starting in August, July and August of 2012, continuing to January of 2013, and then the meetings now uh, today and next week. And the purpose of those meetings was to really have engagement by the community, find out what the concerns are and will be, talk about potential program development, talk about plans for the county in terms of health services, and really establish a fairly ongoing dialogue so that whatever planning issues we were addressing were responsive to community concerns. So having said that, can you all see this? Well, again, we have plenty of really good seats in the front row. <laughs> okay, so um, it's a fairly truncated presentation. We're only going to cover a couple of items, but these we feel are the important ones to give you a sense of, of background and context for the study itself. The goals and objectives of the study can be summarized by these uh, six expressions. The top row, in terms of developing a community friendly campus, access, these are all issues to try to uh, establish more integration and connectivity between the medical center and its institutional role and the community at large. The issues on the bottom are really more about the development for the county's programs. Again, this is a, an academic medical center mission, but also looking at potential for employment opportunities and economic development. Uh, this will describe the relationships between our consulting team and the county. So this is a county of Los Angeles pro project. Uh, we've been hired by the chief executive office, working with the county's Department of Public Works. And this, oops, sorry. Uh, that one. And so this group of consultant firms represents our team. This will give you a flavor of the level of depth that we went to in looking at a whole bunch of issues. So we have disciplines of, of planning, architecture, urban planning, healthcare, business consulting, uh, mechanical, electrical, plumbing, engineering, civil engineering, lighting, signage, historic preservation. The purpose of having all these disciplines was to create a fairly comprehensive evaluation of all the issues affecting the medical center site. It's not just the general hospital building, it's not just the replacement hospital, it's not just healthcare services. It's really all the properties that are contiguous to the medical center, and you'll see that in a couple of slides, that's fairly extensive. So this was a fairly comprehensive um, range of consulting disciplines. This will give you a sense of, of the site itself. It's, uh, the main campus is bordered by Morango to the south, uh, Chicago and Cummings to the east, the zonal to the north, and North Mission on the east side. And as you can see here, this is the historic original General Hospital. This is a replacement hospital that was built and occupied in 2008. And State Street, which is probably the biggest uh, icon, is, is this street that meanders just to the west of General Hospital. Uh, you may or may not know, but General Hospital and LA County has a very storied history in providing health care services to members and residents of, of Los Angeles, going back to 1878. And shortly thereafter, the county and the USC School of Medicine established a collaboration with the USC School of Medicine, provides uh, faculty and physicians and training programs for a whole range of allied health care professionals. And that relationship exists to this very day. So there's a, a very strong uh, synergistic relationship between the School of Medicine and all the other professional schools of, of allied professional training and the medical center itself. So this is the, an overall site plan that shows uh, property ownership in and around the medical center site. The main focus of our master plan is the main medical center campus with some adjacent properties across North Mission. Uh, this is the property owned by the county. This is the juvenile hall and court. And then everything that's shaded in light gray 
are properties owned by USC. Now, USC's uh, Health Sciences Campus has gone through its own campus plan. It was adopted by their board, I believe, last year. And they have now begun to implement elements of their plan. They got about a year's head start from our master planning process. So we tried to establish some collaboration and discussions with the USC planning team. Uh, they're on their own schedule, their own funding cycle. And so where there are areas of overlap, we're trying to at least engage with them to make a, a better plan between theirs and ours. So at this point, I'll turn this over to Catherine, and she can further describe some of the community outreach efforts that we've done to engage the community. So we've been, um, we started with four community meetings. Part of them were, we had one in El Sereno over on, at the Presbyterian, excuse me, at the Christian Presbyterian Church. Um, and we've had other meetings, but in particular, I'm gonna focus on what we've done in El Sereno. We have done in other community meetings, but this is part that's important, I think, here. We have uh, a community meeting number one, as you can see, we had a meeting in El Sereno, along with Lincoln Heights, Boyle Heights, and Chinatown. The meeting format, for the purpose of our first meeting, we wanted to get a sense of what the community values were. So we had different displays and we asked questions. It was, it's been very interactive with people providing a lot of input. We had different station topics, as, as we say, it's not just about the physical spaces. For this project, we have looked at how do we talk to the community in terms of learning what's important. And one of the things we found out is, is that if we look at something like accessibility, how do we make this campus community friendly, we need to look at how do we enable people to move off and on the campus, community members, so that it can be used more widely. So it, we create, we learned that one of our key things was to create a destination for healthy lifestyle choices, including a farmer's market, exercise, nutritional classes, community gardens. Those are the things that people in this community, surrounding the community, that would make them want to come to the campus and use it more. We learned that there has to be, again, as I said, access. How do you get off and on campus easily from El Sereno, from Lincoln Heights, uh, from Boyle Heights, and how do we make it more inviting by providing better wayfinding, signage, more parking and shuttles to move people around the campus. We learned that um, it would help a lot if we created a sense that it was safer on campus, even though people said it was safe in the area, and we learned this by talking to people at community meetings, we need to provide better lighting as well. So. In terms of what people need for educational opportunities, as Ken said, we're looking for educational opportunities, um, economic development opportunities, providing low-cost, lifelong learning opportunities for both professional and personal girls was critical. Again, we're looking at healthy, how we maintain healthy lifestyles. So all that's the focus of this effort. Increase the diversity of activities to create economic development opportunities on campus and in sparking uh, around the area for local residents was critical as well. And again, that was just the input from one community meeting or a series of uh, community meetings where we focused on community values. That kind of laid the groundwork for community meeting two. From that, we developed some concepts that we presented there. Again, it was uh, a series of um, displays around the room and we had a chance for people to look at this place and give us input. And I know LA32 um, was represented um, by people from the neighborhood, uh, including Jorge and, and Yoli, and very interactive type of activities. And we held that meeting at LAC USC Medical Center in January 2013. These were the topics that we presented at that, the different stations. We actually had four different concepts that were presented, conceptual ideas for what this campus could look like. Here are the concepts. And from that, we'll go into what the master plan 
has created, Master Plan team has created. And so, so John will uh, describe some of the thinking that went behind the Master Plan. And, and before John comes up, let me explain that the, the previous four concepts here, these are more diagrammatic concepts. And we tried to create concepts that were responsive to things that we heard from the community. So open space, connectivity issues between the campus and the neighborhoods, trying to preserve historic value and elements on the campus, whether it's General Hospital, the old pharmacy building, the bridge connections. And then uh, zoning on the site to begin to look at what are proper areas of the site to reserve for future health care, uh, whether inpatient or outpatient, uh, future community activities, office space, possibly education research activities. So these were simply diagrams that we developed in response to input that we got. And then in meeting number two, we had the attendees comment and give us direction and ideas about these four options. That then served as the basis for the development of the master plan that John will describe. So really what resulted from our thinking after the, the meetings and the input and our kind of studies of the site was that this is a very complex site. There's a lot of stuff going on there now, and there will be a lot of stuff going on, hopefully. I guess it's implemented one day. The, um, the big challenge with this kind of thing is how do you create a set of spaces and places that people move through kind of naturally, and one place leads to another in such a way that, uh, you know, you're really brought to the activities. If you've ever been to an Ikea store, for example, you know, you know, they walk you through everything. You don't miss a thing, you know, when you go through there. We want a combination of that kind of thinking plus a lot of choices. So people, when they come to the site, maybe they know what they're going to do there, or maybe they came to go to a Sunday market, but they're thinking, hmm, I didn't realize there was this playground over here. You know? So we want to have an, ar an armature, we call it, or a spatial network that you see in the green on the diagram here, that you can get around the site very easily and you always feel like you know what's going on, you know where you're going next. And so I think that's <clears throat> it's very challenging on this site because you know it's hilly, you've got a lot of different buildings there, a lot of stuff is going to be torn down. We don't really want to keep most of the buildings that are on the, the kind of uh, easterly area of the site. And at the same time, as Kent said, our most important concern really was to make sure that we're setting aside enough land for all the future healthcare functions, actual hospital and inpatient and diagnostic and medical services. We want to be sure that we don't put stuff in there later one day that we find oh, we need, you know, 500 more hospital beds, where is that going to go? So that's been very carefully studied as to all the different potential uses. The blue here is the area that we reserve for existing and future um, medical services. The purple in the middle, of course, that's the existing general hospital, and a couple of other buildings that are sort of historic buildings that we want to keep and reuse. And uh, maybe many of you know some or some or, or not a lot about this, but obviously the reuse of the old hospital buildings is a very complicated issue. It's very expensive, and uh, we're, we're working very hard to make sure that we're making appropriate uses out of that building, but we also we don't have tons of public money to spend to turn it into a hotel or something. So, so that's been a big challenge for us. Um, <coughs> sorry. And then we, we see Marengo as still uh, one of the important front doors on the site, but then there's another important potential future entryway up here at Zonal and Mission. So that began to give us a sense that we should increase the public entry spaces. Right now you have a big one here at State and Marengo where you go into the hospital from the, the front door. So we're keeping that as a major entrance. But that takes you into mostly the healthcare stuff. So um, we're having a second major entrance on Marengo that brings you into a series of, of community activities and community functions. And then there's a, there would be a grand. Where's the second one you're talking about? It's uh, right now where, it's more or less close to where the physical plant is. Right now there's a big parking lot here. Well, actually, I, I, I'm 
a little vague on what's across the street here right now. Um, but uh, you know the coroner building on the corner? Yeah. Okay, so starting there and going all the way back to State Street, that whole zone in the future we see as uh, very much an open public serving area. Right now it's closed off. It's just a parking lot, a bunch of uh, secondary sort of temporary buildings. You have the physical plant building there, and then you have the coroner's building. So there's nowhere to go there right now. Are you uh, for the, where the old pediatric building yeah. was? Yeah. West of it. Maybe we can go to a. We have a. We have a, an aerial over here, don't we? Let me go back to. Uh, oh yeah. I thought there was a, some kind of aerial view in here.
the renovation and seismic upgrading and, and reuse of, these, of some of these historic buildings where the four to four heights are almost not functional anymore for, you know, for the kind of uses you're talking about. Or, uh, you're thinking something like a medical office building or, you know, or some kind of thing. I mean, we have been looking at this and it is an ongoing challenge because um, uh, the, uh, you know, the sheer cost of going in and retrofitting and getting a building like that to you know, meet the current seismic standards gets to be pretty disruptive. What about federal money? What's that? What about federal money? I mean, yeah. You spread a lot of money. Yeah. Well, the, the, the sad thing is that, is that the support for, you know, I mean, if you've been watching the news, I guess we can barely get federal money for, for basic services. And that, you know, so it's really been an issue that our folks have gone in and evaluated a lot, a whole, whole spate of buildings there. And uh, some of them we're keeping no matter what, like this little historic building is one of the first hospital buildings uh, in, the, in the state. So I think, I don't know, you're touching on a very difficult issue, and I think a lot of us agree with you in, in a lot of ways. I don't know that we have a good answer for it. <coughs> Right here. 
It's going to be open in uh, January. January, right? And it's about, I don't know, Don, you know, 15 to 20 nonprofits providing an array of prevention services, and health right? services. Yeah. Right. So we're actually adapting the first floor um, for public use and for public benefit. For the community. And the so other floors? Are used with for the county. Files. No, there's people in them. Oh. There's administrative staff in them oh. for fiscal and human resources. restricted to that agreement. 